Galatians chapter 3, verse 7. Now let's look at what Paul said to the Galatians. Therefore know ye, therefore know that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. Right? Remember what we talked about faith. Faith comes by. So only those who hear God are the sons of Abraham. Because they are the only ones that can receive the promise that God made to Abraham. Are you following what I'm saying? Next verse. And the scriptures foreseen that God will ju would justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you, all the nations shall be blessed. He's saying the same thing what Peter said. Are you following me? The same thing Peter said is what he's saying here. That the scripture foreseen that God is going to justify the Gentiles by what? By what? Now, let's put the meaning of faith there. By what? No, no. What is faith? Hearing. Right? So, and, and the scripture foreseeing that God will justify the Gentiles by what? Now, if they are going to hear, God will have to speak. Am I right? Am I right? So, it says the scripture foreseeing that God is going to justify the Gentiles by speaking to them. He preached the gospel to Abraham before the saying, in you all the nations of the earth. Now they are, he's trying to bring, the same thing Peter was saying, but he here was trying to draw this line, how they got from Abraham, and now it is entering to fulfill all the families of the earth. So if it's going to be fulfilled that all the families of the earth will be blessed, then faith have to come to the Gentiles. Because when he says all the families of the earth includes Gentile nations. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It includes Gentile families. So now God is looking. And, and Paul was trying to explain here that. So he was looking at the whole world. They are Jewish people. Abraham was a Hebrew man. You know, he, he was the father of the Hebrews. And so they formed this nation of Jewish people. So Israel became the thing. And they were like, oh, look, we are who we are. You understand what I'm saying? We are who we are. So God loves us. He never allowed anybody to touch us. But then there was a part of the promise God made with Abraham. God made to Abraham that all the families of the earth will be blessed. If that is going to happen, it means, and if this promise is not by the law, so it doesn't mean that we should export the law to every nation and say, you must keep this law. You must keep this law. No. He said, it's not by the law, but it is by faith. So, what that means is that God himself is going to speak to the Gentiles. For he wants to speak to the Gentiles so that the Gentiles will hear him. That is how it is going to be transferred by faith. So here was Peter in the house and he had a vision. And God has sent a man, Cornelius, an angel had appeared to Cornelius and said, send men to Joppa. To so so and so house, get one Peter, tell him to come. When he comes, he will explain some things to you. Okay, sir. He sent men to Joppa. They found Peter. And Peter had that revelation, kill and eat. And then he followed them. And he got there. Okay. Um, I know God sent me here. If not, I won't be here. Then he was just preaching and sharing the word of God to them. The Bible said, while he was speaking, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they, they began to speak in other tongues. Are you get what I'm saying? Wow. Peter saw it. I, I'm sure God never allowed Peter to get to the point where you have to pray for them because that would have been the difficult part. What kind of prayer to pray? God, just have mercy on these people. You know, they are Gentiles. Just have mercy on them. They have heard your word. Paradventure, they were to go to hell. You will just find a way. You understand? But while he was still preaching, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Now, when the Holy Ghost fell on them, guess what? They began to speak with other tongues, right? Now, when they were speaking in other tongues, what do you think was going on? They were prophesying. The word of God had come to them. The word of God didn't come to them because Peter was preaching or by Peter's preaching. Are you getting what I'm saying? The word of God came because God visited them. Praise God. God visited them. Now, let's jump to verse 15. Or verse 9. Give me verse. verse. Look, we're, we're in 7, right? Go, to, go back to 7. Therefore know ye that only those who are of faith are the sons of Abraham. Next verse. 
And the scripture for sin, that God will justify the Gentiles by faith, preach the gospel to Abraham beforehand, saying, in you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Next verse. So then those who are of faith are blessed with believing Abraham. Now jump to verse 15. Brethren, watch this. Brethren, I speak in the manner of men. Though it is only a man's covenant, yet if it is confirmed, no one annuls or adds to it. God made a covenant with Abraham, you remember. Now, I want you to understand something. There are two covenants that God made with Abraham. The covenant of circumcision. You'll find this in Genesis chapter 17. And the covenant of tithe. Now, what is the covenant of circumcision? The covenant of circumcision, God told them that, look, you will cut off um, your foreskin of every male in your nation, right? And God says, that is, by that mark, I will give you the land and I will protect the land for you. Are you, are you understand what I'm saying? And God actually told them, now, I know, you see, I was meditating on this recently. And the Lord began to say some things to me. You know, there are some things God will say to you, just say, Lord, this one will be hard. But by grace. We, especially the church, toy with circumcision. Some will argue that, oh, circumcision is not necessary in Christendom, right? And why would they say that? Because in the scriptures, in the New Testament, they had a problem like that. When the Gentiles, they began to get saved. So some people came from Jerusalem and started preaching. I say, ah, all of you guys, you must be circumcised and you must keep the laws of Moses so that you will be saved. And so Paul and Barnabas was like, nah, we, we can't burden these people with all this keeping of the law and things like that. So they kept arguing and arguing. And they said, okay, you know what? Can we send some people to Jerusalem? Let's go and settle this thing out. And they sent some men to Jerusalem. And they met the elders. They said, we have a problem. And this is the problem. The Gentiles are being saved. But now there's this group that came and started saying that they must keep the law of Moses. Now, at the end of the day, several people made presentation. Even Peter made a presentation and spoke how he was preaching in Cornelius' house. How the Holy Ghost came on them, even though they were, they were not circumcised or they were, the Holy Ghost just came on them. Now, they finished that conference and they decided, I want you to listen to me, that look, these people are getting saved. Let us not lay any burden on them. So let's write them a letter. You guys, just live your life, but don't, you don't have to burden yourself with all those unnecessary things, but make sure you don't eat anything that is offered to idol and all those things they said to them. They never addressed the issue of circumcision. They never addressed it. But they just gave them a blank check. I hear what I'm saying. They gave them a blank check. Because the law of Moses is different from the covenant of God. The law was given to strengthen the people so that the covenant will be in place. Are you listening to me? The law was not the main thing. The covenant was the main thing. And so the Lord was speaking to me and saying, the church will need to revisit this issue of circumcision. And I'll show you why. Give me Genesis 17. Genesis 17. Let's start from verse 7, I think. Watch this. God was speaking to Abraham here. I want you to follow. And he says, mm. I 
and I will establish my covenant between me and you and your descendants after you in their generations. Please take note of this statement. God was speaking to one man, Abraham, and he says, I will, give me the NLT, please. New Living Translation. Watch. He says, I will confirm my covenant. You know what it is to confirm? If something is in existence, right, and then there is a doubt concerning that thing, what do you need? You need a confirmation. Now, God is the one saying, I will confirm my what? Covenant with you and your descendants after you from generation to generation. Please take note. He said, from generation to generation. This is the everlasting covenant. Take note of the other one too. Everlasting. Everlasting covenant. I will always be your God and the God of your descendants after you. Now, descendants after you. Remember what he said, from generation to generation. Are you getting what I'm saying? Next verse. And I will give the entire land of Cana, where you now live as a foreigner, to you and your descendants. It will be their possession forever, and I will be their God. Next verse. Then God said to Abraham, your responsibility is to obey the terms of the covenant. You and all your descendants have this continual responsibility. Did you see that? Did you see that? So there is a covenant, right? The covenant has terms. Are you listening to me? The covenant has terms. And this covenant was not just for one man. This covenant was made with one man. But the covenant is to continue for generations. So it puts a time frame to it. And what's the time frame? Eternity. Say from generation to generation. Now he says, this is going to be the covenant. He says, your responsibility is to obey what? The terms of the covenant. Now what are the terms of this covenant? I told you there are two covenants God made with Abraham. Covenant of tithing and covenant of circumcision. Now the covenant of circumcision is what marries them to the land. Are you listening to what I'm saying? It marries them to the land. As long as they are circumcised, nobody can uproot them from that land. That's why they've tried many times. Destroyed them, but they still gathered back. Something was happening. There's a lot I have in my spirit to tell you today. I come and they bread there. Next verse. This is the covenant that, that you and your descendants must keep. Each male among you must be circumcised. Go on. Watch this. Go on. You must cut off the flesh of your foreskin as a sign of the covenant between me and you. Next verse, quickly. From generation to generation, every male child must be circumcised on the eighth day after his birth. That's his birth. This applies not to only members of your family, but also to the servants born in your household and the foreign-born servants whom you have purchased. So God is not saying this thing is only to your natural blood. Everybody you bring in, are you following what I'm saying? Everybody you bring in, remember where God's mind is. He says, to you all the families of the earth will be blessed. So God says, look, I'm going to give a sign, a token of the covenant. And that token is circumcision, right? Right? He says, not only you, everyone that is after you. From generation to generation. Next verse. All must be circumcised. Your bodies will bear the mark of my everlasting covenant. Are you understanding what God is saying? Say your bodies must what? Bear the mark of my, what did he call it again? Everlasting covenant. Does this thing have an expiry date? Does it have an expiry date? It says no. Now, this gives you an idea of how God keeps covenant. So, it tells you God makes a covenant. There are terms of the covenant. Am I right? Now, the covenant of tithing is the covenant of, 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 um, of um, provision. 
Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, this one means I will covenant you with the land, right? Nobody can take the land from me. You remember when Moses, uh, sorry, David stood up against Goliath? What was the weapon David used against Goliath? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? See, David just knew that this battle is over. Why? This guy is not circumcised. And so he boasted and told Goliath, this battle is not even my battle. I'm just showing up. This battle is of the Lord and the Lord will protect. What was he thinking? The covenants. God had a covenant with them. Meanwhile, Saul was circumcised. All the armies of Israel, they were all circumcised. Goliath was threatening all of them. They were shaking. So the fact that you are in the covenant doesn't mean you will enjoy the benefit of the covenant. If you don't know how to take advantage of the covenant, you will suffer. They were all shaking when Goliath was threatening them, even though they were circumcised. David showed up, a little boy. He didn't come with a new technology. He, didn't come, he just aroused a document that has been there since, since Abraham. This is their generation. In their generation, David said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he will defile the army of the Lord? How? He said, I will, I will finish you. I will hand over your head, your flesh to the beds of the earth. He meant it. He didn't mean it. And the Bible said, when he finished that, the Bible said, and he had no sword in his hands. What was he boasting of? Covenant. Covenant. If the covenant of circumcision was that powerful, that a young boy can stand against a giant who have been a warrior from his youth. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Stand against him and with his mouth he finished the guy. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Then think about the second covenant, which is the covenant of sustenance. And the covenant of sustenance was, is by tithing. Are you understanding what I'm saying? So God made that covenant. I remember I told you two weeks ago. Melchizedek, when he came, he brought bread and wine, right? And he had this thing with Abraham. He said, look, I will sustain you. This is your own part of the covenant. You will tithe, you will give a one-tenth of everything that you have. Okay. And that was also a covenant. I told you, covenants are not, you can't break, you can't, you can't end the covenant, except the covenant have a time frame. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? Except it has a time frame. But if a covenant does not have a time frame, like the one God did with Abraham, now it cannot have a time frame because the extent of the promise on Abraham's life is what? Till all the families of the earth are blessed. 